Getting connected, Garen. Both COVID, but going around, we'd be able to get a little closer. We're live, uh, Commissioner Cook, but I don't see Commissioner Peck on board yet. No, we are live though. Yep. Okay. Yeah, we do get to see you guys. Oh, now it is. It is one o'clock, but we're waiting for Commissioner Peck to come on board and we'll get started. She's got him on the phone right now. He's having a connection issue. Good afternoon, Bob. Sorry about that. I had this morning's link on the calendar. Okay. All right. We uh, do have the sheriff's office online. Uh, Jim, do you mind giving uh, Commissioner Beck up to create who you're with? Sure. We're sitting in the sheriff's office in the conference room, and there's myself, Commander Saltemeyer, Commander Roshlo. Captain Ron L. Nelson, Captain Ronnie Huber, and Captain Adam Diaz, the command staff for the Sheriff's Office in general. And they're all present so that we could hopefully just roll to each one of these sections and I have to 
Okay. Oh, great. Hey, uh, just looking at what we got here, you're uh, just start off with the 520 budget and you'll just take us right on through. So on the 520 budget, we um, kind of a status quo budget. Um, we plan on, we had the two new positions for this year that we didn't end up hiring because of, uh, well, putting them off because of the COVID budget issues, uh, but they are in next year's budget. Um, we had the biggest item that we have um, of concern to us right now is our, uh, manned vehicle that we had budgeted for in 2020 and have not been able to um, complete the transaction yet. We need that to roll over into 2021. Um, those take quite a while to purchase and uh, pay for. Um, other than that, most things are, are pretty much the same. We, uh, we do have some changes when it comes to security that we'll talk about it at great length, but you'll see some changes in our 520 budget reflecting um, being our um, admin person from security budget to the 520 budget. Those are probably the biggest changes, biggest uh, things in the 520 area. Questions? So that personnel was in the, the 20 budget and you're just carrying it forward or the, you didn't use it, carrying it forward to the 21? That's correct. We purposely um, held off on hiring those positions at mid-year uh, because of the COVID thing uh, and discussions with Keith Johnson. Um, we felt it just best to wade into this new the new year and not expend those monies and in reality we would probably would have hired in many ways because of retirements and people leaving we could only onboard people um, so many at a time um, so yeah it's not any additional request for FTE it's just to so, maintain them I guess is the way to put that so Sheriff yeah. Raymond and uh, uh, Commander Roshlow just to be clear for the, the benefit of the board, um, on our budget sheet, you're, you're going to see some increases requested in that uh, salaries and benefits lines. Those are not related to those positions. Those are the result of uh, the desire to add two positions related to security. Um, that uh, Correct. Well, those in the 520 budget, that's, those changes are reflective of moving uh, Captain Huber to yeah. our budget. And then okay. the and two positions uh, for security would be in corrections budget. Okay, thank you. Does that answer your question, Mr. Johnson? Yes. Yeah. Any, any other questions on 520? Not hearing any. Um, just keep carrying on, please. So we're going to go down to jail and corrections and food service commissary. Then is that what you want to talk about next? Or what well, you got, got your 130, 130, 135. Is anything in there that you need to? No, they're they're pretty much status quo. Okay. Well, with that, we're on the 540 then. Okay, um, Steve Saltmeyer, and off of the 540, I mean, you're going to see some substantial decreases in uh, revenue that would be generated. Um, part of that was due to the COVID. Um, in the beginning, the drops in the bookings, intakes, offenders, uh, 
And then we've got the construction that we're getting started for the pods and the locks. And uh, having to close down two pods at a time um, to make it available for the construction to change the locks out on those, but to make it more secure. So um, we're losing some revenue on that as well, just because we can't put as many offenders in the facility at the same time. As soon as those things work themselves out, our numbers will be able to go up some, uh, kind of more towards what we're looking for while still staying safe. So let me interrupt him right there. So what's going to happen is once we're done with the facilities changes, um, some of the structural changes, et cetera, et cetera, is we should see an increase in revenue coming in as we for lack of better word, begin to rent more bed space out to DOC and probably rent bed space out to um, like the U.S. Marshals and some of those places so we can actually generate revenue bringing it back into the system. We should have somewhere right about 300 available beds optimal if, everybody, if everything's clicking and everything's in its place and um, all the extra beds that hopefully this generates we will look at, for lack of better words, renting them out on a daily basis in order to bring revenues to the county versus the opposite way around to offset some of the increases you're taking. Um, so it's my objective to continue on with as many DOC contracts and those other contracts to house offenders in the facility to offset those outgoing costs much as possible. But in order for that to happen, we have to continue on with bringing the facility up to standards and bringing it to accreditation standards and those type of things to make that happen. And we're well on that path. So, sorry for the interruption, but I wanted you to... Um, well, it's going to depend on the COVID, number one, because we sure. have to set aside a certain amount of space that I, I don't know how many how many months do you think before we're up the facility up to with the locks in place? We're, we're believing the locks should be in place in the next eight weeks, and from that it's just the spacing and stuff to accommodate for the where we're at with the COVID at this time. But we okay. should be able to. I mean, that's just the best we can predict. Yeah, so we were averaging about we were averaging. Bob, about 180 inmates a day um, before the whole COVID thing. And at one point, we dropped down to about 130 or so. But as of today, we're at 154. We're at 154. And prior to starting the construction, we were right at 185. Um, so really, the dips in revenue, if you will, will just be, you'll see short little dips in revenue because of everything that's going on. But, yeah. but remember, those a lot of that's dictated to with the um, settlement agreement that took place that we are, aren't under. Right. right. We want to make yeah. sure we avoid not um, going back under those federal dictates. Amen. All right, sorry, Steve. Sorry to interrupt you. Nope. Um, uh, as far as uh, most of the other things that we're going through, you'll see the requests that we were making for you know, additional office supplies. Um, you're looking at, uh, due to the COVID stuff, having to increase a lot of the uh, cleaning supplies and, and disinfectants and masks and gloves, which are still hard to, to get all the time. Um, so we're trying to you know, get enough to stay safe and stockpile some just in case, you know, we run through those weeks and months where we can't seem to get anything. Um, so we, we've increased on uh, uh, the 3100, uh, the 3112 uh, by 70, uh, 74,845. Just the uh, 3113 was uh, about a 1500 increase that we were looking at. And um, again, off of some of these things, uh, 
looking for the gloves and supplies. These are what are part of those things to get done. And what we still also have to supply to offenders as they come through the door, because we got to give them masks and stuff too. So um, those have a toll on us for that. Uh, one of the bigger increases is the 4103. Was there a question? Yeah, uh, have you been working with emergency management on uh, gloves and masks? Yeah, I took the last ones they had, and they had no more. Okay, all right, thanks. I know that they did have quite a stockpile uh, uh, midstream, so. Yes, sir. And uh, right now they're trying to help supply the schools and stuff, and they don't have enough to do that. And I took the last that they could give me. All right, thank you. So, yes, sir. Um, one of the bigger ones is the 4103. Uh, you'll see the increase off of that one. And this is that medical contract. And uh, once that uh, proposal, we were estimating on this, but once the proposal came in, we actually know that that proposal is higher than this. Um, we were requesting that uh, uh, 1, 000, 000, and and we know that that ended up being more along the lines of 1, 000, 600 and something thousand. It yeah. just came in. Right. Um, we have on the last 4125. Uh, this is the, to help compensate for the increase. It's been on the prescription medications that come in here for the offenders. That's an increase of 82,000. Um, uh, with the new contract and stuff and with the more medical, the additional medical that we would be in here, we should be able to drop that number down some. Um, by the having more hands-on care and stuff, but I, I couldn't tell you at this point where that's going to fall. I know it should also save on some of the hospital runs that we end up going to. Um, by some of the equipment and stuff that we'll be getting put into place to help on that, like EKG stuff, so we're not having to run them up to the hospital all the time for that. Hey, this is Commissioner Peck. I got a quick question on the 4103, 4103. Yes, sir. You, you've got 843 and then the additional 400 requests. I, I missed what the delta is. Those together, of course, are 1.2 uh, something. What, what is the total that you think you need? Um, I'm, I believe that the final uh, proposal that came in came in just over, well, or just under 1,700,000. Okay. Yeah, we just passed that a couple of weeks ago. No, I, I remember it. Um, I didn't remember what the total amount was, and I wanted to have it written here in, in my bill. It was 1600000 and some odd thousand. Yeah, so we're we're still another, after the request that's in your book here, we're still another 450 short. Yes, sir. Okay. Not realizing the proposals were going to come in that high. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. Commander, going back up to your revenues just briefly, the uh, state opioid response grant, um, we're showing that decreasing by 27% in uh, 2021. Are, is that a, a reasonably certain number, the 304-968? We are, um, at this point, the uh, health care authority is still working to give us a contract. They're going to make that retroactive to where the last one ended, which it ended October 31st. Um, we are looking at that that contract should come in at about 417000 that we can bring in on this, but we knew that we were going to lose about a seventeen. Uh, to 25 percent they couldn't give us an actual on that but they knew that they were going to have some um, cut off of that just due to the you know the federal government and COVID and what was happening and that and revenues coming in so um, again we don't have that contract yet but I am receiving assurances that we will get that funding 
and then I've set up our medical program to make sure that it hits the floor running with uh, completing that grant as they requested. Thank you. Keith, I got a question for you. The CARES Act money, none of it can be used for? Yes, uh, it can actually. And we are uh, uh, going to have, have uh, some money available. Uh, I don't have a final number, but we're probably in the neighborhood of a million dollars for CARES Act funding for the county that uh, will be used to offset some of these uh, needs in the in the jail facility. I know we've already put some of the things on a line item that's allowed us to separate uh, that out. Right. Uh, for the for the auditor's office. Yes, th that's being included in the current year. Any other question? So on. Um, Line item five nine seven one uh, three four. Uh, we're looking at a sixty six thousand increase, sixty six thousand nine twenty three, and this is on the commissary uh, budget. To help offset for the costs of how that's as as things increase, and again. Um, some of those expenses also uh, rise up just for shipping and supplies and those kinds of things. Um, everything's going up because it's just as harder to get things shipped in. Harder to find things and increases because some workers are not out there to take care of it too. So um, we're projecting that cost increase and off of uh, 1,011, for the 77,000, this is an overtime increase that we project for next year. Um, that commissary, that's not a pass through? The uh, inmates don't pay for that? or They pay for some of it to help offset those costs. Um, but it's not, I mean, the, the, the commissary itself isn't producing. And again, we're kind of in a depressed community somewhat so it's just not a whole lot of revenue coming out of that right now okay we'll try to sell more cheeseburgers next year yeah. we we are working we are working with the commissary people to try to lower the prices that they put us because they kind of put us in a seattle area pricing range and i discussed that with them the other day to see if they could lower the cost of some of those hamburgers we might be able to sell more <laughs> but the, it, the inmates have complained about that. All right. Okay, anything further on the 540? No, sir. Okay. Um, what do we got? 550? And I am not having anything off of that as a change. Okay. There's, there's some construction stuff that I know that we were going to do. We've kind of put a hold on some of that just because of the COVID, just to see how the county's going to be. And we can, you know, just look at that for next year for some upgrades for the 2022. Since we opened up the construction conversation, but to my knowledge down there, outside of fixing locks and those type of things, uh, most of the construction is completed. So um, maybe you ought to say what construction it is that you anticipate the construction. E-Pod e -pod is one of, the, one of our pods that we have that has the old doors on it, um, old construction, old you know things that even, you know, the doors themselves weren't working. I was able to get some locks done and get them in place. And the locks are working great, but the doors are, they're just old. They're going to start falling apart on us here in a little bit. So, so when you talk construction, then you're just talking currently upgrading of the locks that we're currently doing. There'll be more of that. Well, the, the, the lock 
locks will take care of with the lock construction that we're doing right now. That'll take care of most of the locks that we have that need to be taken care of. After that, we've got some doors that are old doors, door frames and stuff that cannot sustain themselves anymore. We would actually have to come in, cut the whole metal frame and everything right at the concrete level and install all new framework and doors because they're just old doors. They wouldn't even meet ADA requirements at this point. So when that construction is done, we would try to meet what's necessary off of that, which we would also install upgraded locks and that would help us on that. In the, the discussion, um, Bob, that we had last year where we were going to try, and again, these are my words, we were going to piecemeal the best we could a little bit at a time. So um, that would be probably the last piecemeal piece, if you will, uh, down the road. Correct. When that comes. All right. Okay, what do we got next? Um, more of the salaries and wages. And I had put in a proposal off of that. You want me to discuss this with uh, Jack? Off at the uh, security building? No, I'll discuss Okay. All right. That's, that's what I've got. Okay. Hopefully, to add for uh, both the sheriff's office side and the corrections office side, you're going to see some requests for small tools. Uh, those small tools are going to consist of uh, paraphernalia or a riot equipment. On the civil unrest in the courthouse, and also uh, out in the out of the streets of the county, also. So, what we're going to try to do is begin to purchase, uh, for example, X amount of pepper ball rifles for civil unrest. Uh, all those type of uh, equipment that's needed for both law enforcement and corrections for when we have you know, civil unrest situations, which they're coming. Just just mark my word, they're coming, and um, it would be uh, behoove us to be ready for when that takes place. And so that's some of the tools requests that you're seeing that we plan on using with the money is to prepare ourselves should the civil unrest take place either internally in the courthouse campus or externally uh, so that both sides of the house have access to that equipment. And then, of course, the training issues and those type of things that as a county, uh, our deputies are not remotely outfitted to handle civil unrest right now. Uh, so it's, we really need to get the equipment up a little bit in inventory uh, for them to have the ability to respond. So that's probably the bulk of the capital outlay other than we've, or small tools, whichever it is, other than we've, um, we didn't buy, for example, the sights for the uh, um, patrol car rifles that we will probably, if we could get the money back, get them purchased next year, uh, and there's a need for that, those type of things. Beyond that, we're not asking for any major type of outlays other than maintenance type of thing with our outlay. So, uh, Sheriff Raymond, Commissioner Peck, our are some of those down baseline small tools and equipment uh, related to the possibility of your department taking over courthouse security? Um, yeah, it, it could in a, in a, to a certain degree, but if we take over um, what's, what some are here referring to as a shack, the actual security, what you would see is you would actually see armed in sheriff uniform uh, personnel that have all the uh, arrest authorities and authority to enforce direct of people coming and going from the courthouse. So uh, it'd be minimal other than uniforms and handguns and those types of things to equip those two additional bodies. 
uh, which I think we we're just absorbing, aren't we? Than what we already have existing, or did we ask for? We asked for uh, um, taking one senior officer position and promoting that. Well, no, that's that's something different. Okay. Right. So other than that, yeah, for the equipment, yes. So the I, the idea, commissioners, is if we take over the uh, security shack. Uh, currently, what we have is we have a courthouse security group that moves inmates back and forth into the courtrooms, et cetera, et cetera, during the day, Monday through Friday. And so we'd be adding uh, two additional people to, to cover the security of the entrance of the courthouse. Um, and with that, of course, that's gonna, that group is going to expand a little, so we want to make a sergeant and a corporal in in, in that squad's ranks, so there's adequate supervision for it all. Uh, and then, so those would be the minimal um, increases as far as, you know, additional money for a corporal and, and, and additional money. Well, actually, just additional money for a sergeant position. So the cost for equipping those individuals uh, would be uh, out of your current budget or out of this? increase uh, request for small tools and equipment? Well, it would just be under our uniform where, where we pull our money for uniforms and equipment from. So okay. um, we, we would just make it work with what we got, if that, if that makes sense. Right. Does that answer your question? Not really, but you know it's it's going to come from one or the other, so it probably really doesn't matter. I was just looking to get a better sense of what yeah, the twenty-one it, it, eight fifty additional is going to. Right. It doesn't. It, it, oh, it does. If we end up with two FTE positions uh, to cover those courthouse issues, um, we'll figure out how to get them uniforms and equipment order, um, whether you give us the money or not. That's helpful. Right. Any further? Well, the small tools on the law enforcement side is uh, just basically for replacement of radios and uh, the optics that we talked about, uh, those type of issues. They're just maintenance issues. And riot control stuff, which is going to be utilized on both sides of the house. Any corrections in the sheriff's office? Well, I think somebody may have an open mic that you're dragging newspapers uh, across your mic. If you check that, please, I'd appreciate it. Enough noise, I can't hear people. Yeah, there should be a breakdown um, attachment A1. That shows the equipment that's in that 21 um, that increased. Commissioners, that detailed breakdown is going to be in the uh, Sheriff's independent binder, not in the uh, big budget binder, if that helps you. What tab would it be under? Um, Sheriff's baseline, baseline changes. changes.
sign it? Oh yeah, I've, I've found it, been going through it, thanks. The uh, item number two, an increase of 74,845 says, uh, hard to find items and going up due to COVID. The description is care and custody items inventory. Can I get a little more detail please on what that actually is? Okay, so what you're having off of that is the cleaning and contamination and the, all the supplies that you end up using, mattresses, those kinds of things that you're having to either destroy, get rid of, replace. These are more of those items that are pretty costly. They happen pretty quick. That I mean, just as you're, again, disinfecting and cleaning and people that get quarantined off and uh, stuff that you end up throwing away and replacing, and it's due to COVID. Are you throwing more things out? because of COVID as opposed to yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. So Keith, that's a, just a capture item for COVID funding. Right. Ready to carry on? Okay, what do we get into CECOM? Uh, 911. So, most things with 911 are simply a, as far as the tax revenue, we, we estimated what we thought that would be. Um, and it's a pass through, it goes on to fund. Um, we do have a line item in our budget for our uh, paying for our user fees. Um, that, and then we have the grant from the state 911 office, which is I think 27,000 change this year. Um, other than that, that's about all there is with 911 right now. It's, most of it's a pass through and, and our user fees pretty much set. We don't have a lot of flexibility in those things. Questions on that? No. Okay. Let's carry on to 580 uh, security. All right, for, for um, Monty talks, let me um, open up with the whole security thing. So. Currently, the way security is ran on the campus is the sheriff's office does all the electronic monitoring, alarm monitoring. Um, they actually oversee the civilian operations in the security shack. Um, security in the wells of the courtrooms, both uh, digital and audio, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, the only thing that the sheriff's office doesn't have direct control over, again, for lack of better words, is that front security shack. And uh, it's, uh, from my view, it's, uh, well, it's a management issue, number one, trying to manage people that aren't under the span of control of the sheriff's office. And then, um, you know, they're not empowered, to be quite honest with you, to, to do anything other than to call the police and hope we get there in time. Um, so the idea is uh, not to have a civilian contract, to put security uh, under the supervision and control of the corrections division, uh, i.e. Commander Soltemeyer, with that uh, E-Squad that currently does all the other security operations in the county. Um, and it, it appears would be the best way to management and uh, to manage it and to be most cost effective and still leave uh, control to a certain degree with the commissioners uh, because uh, as you are aware, at any given time, uh, you all are free to take over um, corrections operations. And uh, if you chose to do that, then you would be- Let's not be talking be crazy, do that. sir. What's that? I said, let's not be talking crazy. <laughs> right, right, well, well, I mean, it's, it's a fact, it's the truth. Um, 
So that's that's the con the general concept with that is uh, to try to compartmentalize it in the corrections division because it's uh, probably the most cost effective way and the uh, best way to mitigate the risks that are involved out there. They, those people involved out there, like I say, they would be in sheriff's uniforms. Um, they would hold a commission uh, that will be issued by me uh, so that they have some authority to deal with some of the things that take place that seem to be taking place out there on a regular basis. And then, of course, it all also allows us to, uh, when the county wants to open up at night or all those type of issues, just to simply make arrangements to have the right, right personnel there to open up for what the county chooses and desires to do. Chair Raymond, could you um, take a minute and just help me get a better understanding of the uh, cooperation, overlap, interaction between courthouse security and the security provided by Bayless in the courtroom. We had a discussion with the Superior Court folks and their budget about bailiffs and how we apparently uh, have the only armed bailiffs in the state of Washington now. And uh, I'm just wondering if that is uh, part of this broader courthouse security discussion or if those are uh, totally isolated and should stay that way. Bailiffs should stay isolated and stay that way. The only, the only, um, power that the sheriff provides the bailiff is, is a commission, a limited commission. They basically work under the direction of the Superior Court judge that they're working for. Uh, and the Superior Court, or nobody has, isn't in charge of the security out in the general audience of the, of the, of the courtrooms, et cetera, et cetera. There's two different functions. And it's the sheriff's office job to uh, execute the orders of the court, not the bailiff, and then also for us to get inmates to and from the courts in a safe and efficient manner. Um, so they're really two different job functions, and bailiffs aren't under the control of the sheriff in any way. An understanding that the bailiffs don't work for you and they're not under your authority, um, what is their function just in general terms for my education? Security for the judge. And the jury in what in what they refer to as the well. So in other words, where the attorneys and the jury and the judges in the front part of the courtroom behind the little false wall that everybody they're in charge of what's there. Um, and and that's it. Okay. And would would your taking over courthouse security uh, as we've been discussing uh, have any impact on your ability to provide security? Uh, in the in the courtroom, as you just described, uh, my in my opinion, it would actually enhance it. If okay. if a judge orders something shut down, then we we would have the ability to respond to that better. Okay, thank you. Uh, looks like we've pretty much gone through your uh, budget numbers. Uh, do you have anything further for us? that we've missed? No, we've tried this year to keep it as simple and uh, not as, hopefully not as expensive uh, other than the obvious inflation issues and those type of things. We've yeah. tried to keep our requests for FTEs to a minimum. Um, we've tried this year uh, not to expend uh, any money that wasn't necessary to expend so we could return it back to the general budget to prepare for this year. Um, so, um, well, we're hoping that you uh, see that we've been cooperative with you all, money and dollar-wise, uh, done the best we can under the circumstances. But with that, holding off, uh, we have held off on training and a bunch of other things that we are going to have to catch up on in order to be certified, um, our, our deputies to be certified and trained properly, those type of things. Um, the final goal this uh, coming up in 2021, which is the number one priority goal, is for our corrections facility to be accredited. Um, we are currently about at easily 75% completed towards that accreditation, and the expectation is that we will be accredited by 
the spring of 2021 during the uh, first WASPIC conference, and I believe will be one of about three jails in the state that are accredited, which is a big deal, um, liability and risk-wise, to have that uh, little plaque that says you're doing everything by standards, and by the book, with policies and practices and procedures. And hopefully yeah. that mitigates some of our uh, financial risks in the corrections world by making that happen. Well, I think uh, I can speak for all three of us and expect to uh, appreciate your your uh, conservativeness and, and uh, looking out for the county as a whole. So uh, I'm sure we all appreciate it. Thank you. I would just add that anywhere that we can lawfully and legitimately assign costs to COVID is in particular, those large one-time costs, we don't want to miss this opportunity that the funds have been provided. Every dollar we can move legitimately under COVID is another dollar you'll we'll probably have for training. So, um, Keith, I'm probably talking to you as much as anybody, but for everybody, thank you. All right, thank you. So unless you have something else uh, out of your office, I think we are have gone through our agenda with you. So thank you all for attending. Thank you. Okay. And as far as our office, I, uh, that, unless you want to review miscellaneous funds or anything, um, I think we'll end up doing quite a complete review here in the near future, but uh, Keith, what do you have for us? Yeah, I think we've uh, we've managed to go through the the miscellaneous funds uh, within each uh, department that uh, has presented so far. I'm not aware that we had any postponements, so I think uh, we are to the point now where we could uh, 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 recess today and then come back tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. Okay. Well, as I've said all week long, I will be leaving here in a few minutes for Olympia, so uh, I'll not be back until Monday. So uh, don't give the farm away. <laughs> well, Public Works is next, and uh, fortunately most of their uh, money is uh, not current expense, but uh, we're well aware of the that still taxpayer dollars involved. Hopefully that yeah. won't happen. I'm going to try to get some money. I don't know how much they're going to recruit me from uh, the discussion tomorrow, but there uh, were Franklin counties on the agenda to uh, try to get some money for the uh, fire uh, costs. And so I told Craig earlier, I'll try to do all the lobbying I can before it comes up to a, a vote. Say uh, Keith, I'll just remind that uh, I have been uh, elected to the County Road Administration Board as well, effective 2021. And um, they've asked me to uh, participate as much as I can in the meeting on Thursday. Um, and it starts at 10 and it runs till 4. So obviously, uh, I can't uh, be gone doing that. We, we need more than one commissioner participating in this workshop. Um, but there may be uh, there may be a little bit of opportunity on breaks and elsewhere. Um, if I can get some time to uh, do that, I intend to. So just a heads up, thanks. Yeah. Well, I, I would expect also, uh, Commissioner, that you know we've got from nine to ten with public works that you know uh, the way we've been going through the budgets, you're probably going to be done before ten on public works, and I wonder if we could uh, uh, the need to hold off HAPO and RV until Monday, maybe? I was going to suggest it's possible that uh, we could even uh, bring the HAPO and RV park budgets before the board before 10 o'clock in the morning. Uh, it just depends on the number of questions and, and the conversation around public works, but uh, I, will, I will notify Mr. French that we're running ahead of schedule and to anticipate being ready 
uh, before that uh, 10 o'clock break, and we'll do everything yeah. we can to, to get uh, Commissioner Peck on schedule. Um, if yeah, we yeah, have Commissioner Cook, if you would share with the crab board the situation, that would be appreciated. Exactly, yes. So we'll work it out between us. So, Keith, is there an update on the uh, RV park about the situation that's taking place out there? I heard something the other day that uh, Keith Wilson was fired. We did uh, have a management change at the RV park. Uh, right now, uh, Tom French and uh, uh, George Rodriguez over at the Happel Center are uh, taking over some daily management functions. Uh, I've worked with the uh, park uh, contract hosts to take on uh, some temporary duties. But uh, yeah, we are uh, in the process of uh, making some changes there. What was the reason uh, for the firing? Mr. Chairman, I've proposed that uh, a workshop in the budget uh, is not an appropriate time for this discussion. As long as we can combine it to the potential impacts on the budget of those activities, I'm okay. But uh, the rest of the uh, discussion is not appropriate. And, uh, I just need to know whether you are going to close this out here or continue. If you're going to continue, I'm going to sign off. Uh, Keith, I think the discussion that Commissioner Diddy here is speaking of it should be a one on one with Keith rather than a. a are you are you both a, were you aware of the firing? Not of the firing, no. I was aware of the discussion ahead. But you weren't aware of the firing. I was not aware of it until yesterday. I got told it. Yeah. I was curious. Just as, spend time with, with uh, Keith offline. Okay. All right. We are adjourned or on recess until 9 a.m. tomorrow morning. And uh, I just don't know that I'll have time to get back on board. So I'll see you all Monday. Thank you.